We have a climate emergency. We need to take action now. How can we best do this? Carbon emissions have been rising steadily for the past 200 years. Since the pre-industrial era, through the Industrial Revolution, from 200 parts per million to now having exceeded 400 parts per million. Carbon dioxide, CO2, is the main driver of climate change. The main source of these carbon emissions is the burning of fossil fuels. We are now burning 55 gigatons per annum into the atmosphere, and climate change is happening. It's happening very quickly. The International Panel on Climate Change, made up with about 11,000 eminent scientists from around the world and forecasting where climate change is heading. From where I sit at Murdoch University, I've been fortunate enough to work closely with a number of key climate scientists that contribute to this great body of work. Their work has informed the most recent IPCC report, which shows that we've now reached one degree C in global warming. We're heading towards 1.5 degrees C warming very quickly, and it's having serious climate change impacts. If we reach two degrees Celsius, we're going to have catastrophic climate change. Bill McKibben, he looked at all this climate modelling, he looked at the fossil fuel companies, their annual reports, and he compiled all of that work and he put it down to three numbers. The first number, two degrees Celsius. If we reach this, we have catastrophic climate change. The second number, 565 gigatons, this is how much carbon emissions we can pour into the atmosphere until we get to this two degrees warming. His third number was 2,000 795 gigatons. This is the amount of proven coal, oil and gas reserves that the fossil fuel companies have. This is what they want to burn. The key part of this number is that it's five times bigger than the 565, which is all that we need to put into the atmosphere to get to this two degrees Celsius. The Global Carbon Project has also looked at all of this modelling and have prepared scenarios of the future, what will happen. So we know we're already pushing above 400 parts per million now. We've got one degree C warming already. We're on the way to 1.5 degree C if we don't stop emissions very soon. Even if we stabilise now at 400 parts per million concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere, we will have 0.4 metre sea level rise by the end of this century. If we keep going, and we go up to 500 parts per million, we will get to a three degrees Celsius temperature rise. In the coming decades, this would give us a 0.6 metre sea level rise around the world. 900 parts per million, what will happen? This will take us up to a devastating five degrees Celsius. This is the direction we're heading if the fossil fuel companies are gonna burn all of those proven reserves of oil, gas and coal. By the end of this century, that would give us 0.8 metre sea level rise around the world. This is something that developing countries would be extremely vulnerable to. In any of these scenarios, even the first one, we would see millions of people in these developing countries, low-lying lands, heading for higher ground. So this brings me back to where we live, here in the southwest, we have a drying climate. Our rainfall decline has resulted in a 60% reduction in runoff in the Perth catchment dams in the Perth Hills. So we now only get 10% of our water supply coming from these catchment dams. 50% is coming from massive seawater desalination plants at huge financial and carbon cost. 40% of our water supply is coming from groundwater. This is a declining resource, along with the declining rainfall. It is already over-abstracted beyond sustainable yield. In the northern suburbs, we're even recycling our sewage and injecting it back into the aquifer 
to top up this groundwater. Here in Western Australia, in the southwest, we have many iconic ecosystems which are under enormous threat. We have the Great Ningaloo Reef. This is suffering some serious impacts at the moment. The rising temperatures are also impacting seagrass meadows, like at Shark Bay. The heat wave and the drought in 2010 had huge impacts on penguins and there were huge population losses of black cockatoos. So we know the impacts here in the southwest and they're getting worse. So this brings me to the action we need to take. We need to build resilience across Western Australia, understand the change that's coming. The first transformation, transforming heavy industry. We have a huge liquefied natural gas industry in the north of this state. This has engineering capability and manufacturing capacity. We need to harness the wealth that's generated from this industry and convert this to renewables. Have a look at the UK. This is a useful model. They have their off offshore oil and gas industry. They have used that engineering know-how and manufacturing capability to build a really strong and growing offshore wind farm industry and a marine renewable sector. We can harness the wealth from our LNG industry to build a marine renewables, tidal power and green solar hydrogen industry to rival the world. But if that's not enough, we can start to build resilience at a community level. We can build community infrastructure. If you have a look at our electricity network, the Swiss, the Southwest Interconnected System, we now know and actions are underway to transition away from coal and convert this electricity grid into solar, wind and biomass systems. This grid, this new grid, will need an enormous amount of energy storage because renewable energies are variable. So we need energy storage to stabilise that. We're probably going to need something like 200 community-scale batteries across the Swiss. Two or three or four utility-scale batteries, the big ones, that are currently being built in Adelaide. These can be located where sewer mains and power lines cross. We need to green our city. We can use the sewer mining plants powered by solar battery systems to produce recycled water for urban greening, urban forestry, urban agriculture. If that's not enough, then it's back to us. It's back to you and I. What are the personal actions that you and I can take? Look at the solar rooftop revolution that's rolling out across Perth at the moment. Tens of thousands of solar photovoltaic rooftops being installed all the time. In total, it's a bigger generator than any of the coal generators in Collie. But do you know what has the potential to reduce emissions more than solar power? Moving to a plant-based diet, using public transport, riding a bike, growing food at home, avoiding single-use plastics, composting your wastes. There's so many actions we can take, so many things we can do at a personal level to build our personal and local resilience, change is coming. We need to act, we need to build resilience. Thank you.